In this module, we will look at the process of digitizing images. Consider the image that is shown on the screen. It is of the letter L. For the purpose of digitization, an image is said to be divided into individual spots or points that are known as pixels. In this case, there are pixels along the horizontal line and there are pixels along the vertical line as well. Suppose that there were 640 pixels along the horizontal line and 480 pixels along the vertical line, then we say that this image has a resolution of, of 640 by 480. The higher the resolution, the better the image quality. We could also use different coding systems for these pixels to represent the image in either black and white or gray scales or using colors. By assigning values to these pixels, we can digitize the image. Let us take this example and digitize the information that is already shown. Assume that the image is in black and white. Therefore, each of these pixels can either take a value of either 0 or 1. Consider the first row of pixels. Let us assume that we will assign a value of 0 to represent white and assign a value of 1 to represent black. The first pixel on the first row is white, therefore it will take a value of 0. The rest of the pixels on the first row are also white, meaning that there would be 640 zeros representing the first line of this image. Now let us move to the second line. In the second line, the first pixel will take a value of 0 because it's a white. The second pixel will take a value of 0 because it's white. However, the third pixel will take a value of 1 because it is black. And the rest of the pixels will take a value of 0 because all of them are white. Now let's quickly move to the third line where the initial value is 0 to represent a white pixel. The next value is 0 to represent a white pixel and the third value here however is a 1 representing a black pixel and so on. We could capture this information by digitizing each line of information that is shown on the image. We could now transmit this information to the receiving end where by interpreting this information the image can be recreated. For example, by reading line 1 we know that all these pixels on line 1 are white by reading the value. Here on the second line we know that the first two pixels are white and the third pixel is a black and so on. So we will color this into black. Likewise we will recreate the image as shown here and eventually we will recreate the letter L in this manner. Now let us compute the bandwidth that is required to transmit this black and white image over a communication line. In this case, the image has a resolution of 640 by 480. That means each image will have 640 times 480 data points. Each data point is represented by a single digit. 
because remember it's a binary digit that can carry a value of either 0 or 1. Therefore, the total number of bits that are required to represent this image is 640 multiplied by 480 multiplied by 1. As we can see, this is indeed a large number. Images in general require the most bandwidth and storage compared to audio and data. Now this is simply in the case of black and white. Now let us consider that these images can be represented in 16 different grayscales. What is a grayscale? A grayscale is as follows. At one end of the grayscale you will have the color white and at the other end of the grayscale you will have the color black. In between the intensity of the black color is gradually increased from this side to the other side. So for example this grayscale that is the one ne next to white is slightly darker and the one next to that is even more darker. It gets darker as we proceed in this direction until we hit the very end where it becomes black. The total number of variations in this particular example is 16 because we have already stated that image will be represented using 16 gray scales. Compared to the previous case where we had only black and white to represent, now each dot needs to represent 16 different variations. Therefore, we need four binary digits to represent the different colors or the different gray scales. How is it done? Take for example 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 will represent white, 0, 0, 0, 1 will represent a slightly darker color and will go all the way up to 1, 1, 1, 1 which would be black. In this case we can compute the storage requirement of an image that has a resolution of 640 by 480 and it has a gray scale of 16. The storage requirement in this case is 480 multiplied by 640 or you can say it's 640 multiplied by 480 multiplied by 4. Why is it 4? Because we are using 4 bits to represent each of these pixels shown here. As we can see this is a very high storage requirement for a very simple image. If we use more grayscales or if we use a higher resolution obviously we need much higher storage and bandwidth requirements to either store or to transmit this image. Now let us look at briefly the storage of information in color. Again the same principle holds. Consider this image that is in color. We can have different representations of color. For example, at the very basic minimum, in general, we have 256 variations of color. To represent 256 variations of color, we need 8 bits of information to be stored on each pixel. Therefore, an image that has a resolution of 640 by 480 will require 640 times 480 times 8 bits to store a single image. The storage and bandwidth requirements can increase significantly as the variations in color increases. 